What is going on beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. We are here in the snake room and if you look right in here, Kevin the King Cobra has laid some nice spicy, ooh, stinky meat balls, ooh, mamma mia, ooh. Okay, that's disgusting. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little lock box, I'm gonna lock it up, I'm actually gonna go inside, take out all the poop, we're gonna throw it away, and I'm gonna change out the water and get it nice and clean, scrub that water bowl out, fill it up with fresh water, it's gonna be good to go. Let me see, also, look over here while we're in the snake room, take a good look at Childish Gambino, my Gaboon Viper cross with a Rhino Viper. This is a naturally occurring hybrid out in the wilds of Africa. Their territory overlaps, they find each other, and they create these hybrids. They are both from the family Betis. These are short, fat-bodied snakes from Africa. Puff adders, Gaboon Vipers, Rhino Vipers, Ethiopian Mountain Vipers. This is such a cool snake. Look at its colors. Insane looking. Beautiful yellow horns white, yellow head, and a nice little arrow on top. You would not want to get tagged by that snake. All right, so I have my cleaning stuff right here. I have my can. I'm going to bring it right over here. We have the scooper. I'm going to unlock this right here. We are going to close Kevin's door up. He's inside his box right now. So safely close the box. There we go. Sweet. Now the King Cobra is secure. We are good to go slide this glass over here. There we go. Slide this side over. Perfect. Okay. First what I want to do is take out this water bowl and oh my god, look at all this. That's a lot of duty. Only the finest room service for a king. Do 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 look at that cookies and cream will make you scream. No it's not taste oh I just got it everywhere. Well call me Martha Stewart on a cooking show cause that's a hot biscuit right there. Oh the joys of keeping animals, cleaning their poop, basically being a maid to them, being a really a, a servant. Oh man, I just jammed it right in there. I'm not using it, I hate that poop scooper. Go. Gonna get right in the cracks. You get in the cracks where it's moist. Oh, that's spicy. That's very spicy. That was a heavy one. That was a that was about a quarter pound digestive python right there. you. Oh, you know, I feel really bad because you guys are probably wondering where's the footage of Kevin eating the python. Well, it wasn't that long of a video. He's actually started to grab his python and rip them inside the box to start eating them now. He doesn't really come out and eat anymore. I mean, here you go. Small clip. Oh, did you see that? Oh, where are you going, Kevin? You gonna drag that away? Look at that. Look at him. Oh, look at him just dragging his food into his box. You can actually see... Look at him, just powering down. Oh man, I couldn't even show you guys for a second. Let's see. Let's move that. Oh, he's right in there. Ooh, dragging a five and a half foot python in the box. How's that? The power's insane. I love the power. You want to... Eat. <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right, guys, as you can see, Kevin has dragged the first half of the body inside the box. He's worked his way all the way up the neck into the head, so he can start swallowing head first. No pun intended. Anyways. Well, all right, guys, Kevin finished that meal pretty quick. Wasn't able to capture on footage because he's been taken into his box. Don't worry. In the future, he'll be in a bigger enclosure, and we're going to do some naturalistic-looking hide boxes. And uh, if you look over here, Big Eastern Dimeback is full of some rabbits. So everyone's happy. They're content. I will see you. Focusing. I will see you guys on the next Chandler's Wildlife. Bye. And that is Kevin pulling the python into the box. As you can see, he is not too fond of the camera anymore. He likes to just grab it, drag it inside the box. He starts to work his way up to that head and starts swallowing head first. So I'm gonna try my best to get good footage of him in the future, but for now he's being a little bit uh, a little bit of a shy eater. It's like me. It's like please don't look at me while I eat my chipotle. You know, you know. Okay, that's wet, that's moist.
That's nice. The joys of keeping reptiles. Are you guys curious of how the new rattlesnake is doing? I am too. As you can see, there are towels up on this cage. That is so the animal gets accustomed to being in the cage with that female and not too spooked every time we walk in the room. I did the same thing for my king cover when I first got him, so he could calm down, settle up in his new enclosure, take some couple meals down, and start to relax. Let's get a little sneak peek of how they're doing. Let's, uh, let's see. Oh, no, wait, look. Guys, guys, guys. They're coiled up with each other. The female and the male are coiled up with each other. If you were wondering if they're comfortable with each other, if they're getting used to each other, look at this. That is insane. Look at that. They're coiled up on top of each other. Two... Two... Oh, look at that spicy meatball on the left. Oh, man. That is so awesome. I'm stoked to see that they're getting comfortable with each other. I'm going to let the meatball stand there for about another day, and then I'm going to have to get like a scooper and scoop it out. I'm not going to take the rattlers out, because obviously this new rattlesnake does not like me. He is not used to me. I'm going to give him some more time, about two weeks before handling him again. For now, if I need to get poop out, I'll just get, grab the little uh, snake grabbers, and I'll scoop it out. That's really what they're good for, because snake tongs can possibly hurt the animal, depending on how you use them. So let's see. It looks like I'm just about done cleaning out all these delectable, spicy, moist, perfect meatballs. You know what's really gross? When you grab something like dog poo with a tissue or a paper towel and it's too thin and then you feel the moistness in between the towel and your hand. That's every time I've been grabbing poop today. <sighs> That's this very a moist tool. Oh boy. And the piece of resistance, a nice clean water bowl with the finest, the most drinkable H2O boy. That's a good, that's a good moist bowl of water. And I'm gonna put this right over here, and then we're gonna go right over here, and then I'm gonna say, hey Kevin, you ready to come out and play? Huh? I can't whistle. Unlock this, like this, open it just a little bit, and then uh, use the hook, and usually he's not going to come out. Okay, so Kevin is free to roam his enclosure, but he's most likely going to stay in there. There we go, I'm going to lock that up, just like that. Sweet! I'll, I'll edit it so it looks like I caught it. Sweet! Yeah, I caught it! So now what we're gonna do is give some water to my Waggler's Viper. She is very thirsty. This is a tropical species from Southeast Asia, right over here. I'm gonna move the can. We're gonna come real low. Have a look. Right down there, that's her. You guys probably haven't seen her in a little bit. She's doing awesome lately. She just took down a little rat pup recently. And look, she's still ready to go. She wants something to eat. You want some water? There we go. A nice soaking, a nice drink. Look at her. Now she is called a temple viper, also known as a waggler's viper. This species is from Malaysia. They are found throughout Southeast Asia, but this individual is a Malaysian waggler's viper, and she has beautiful gold coloration. And depending on what part of Southeast Asia they're from, they could have really dark, dark black bands with green and yellows. They come in many different colorations depending on what range they're found in, just like king cobras. And she is a beautiful girl that I've had for about a year and a half now. She's doing great. Look, she drinks right out of the spout. I really love this snake. I'm so glad she's doing so well. The key with the Waggler's Viper in captivity is keeping them hydrated. Because in Southeast Asia, it rains every day and the humidity is crazy. So they're constantly drinking off their own bodies, off the leaves around them, getting a good drink. So hydration is key to keeping these guys alive and healthy. Look at her, she's so happy. She's just slurping down that water. All right, so I'm gonna change the spout to spray or mist. Let's see, there we go. I'm just going to miss the whole enclosure now. Get some nice humidity in the whole entire exhibit. There we go. Nice little rain shower. We're going to moist the leaves up a bit so she can drink off those leaves. Just a good spray all around. And as you can see, that is a happy Wagler's way there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And that is what they call a spicy meat... <coughs> And a lot of you guys have been asking what's going on with the baby rattlesnakes that I got quite a while ago. They are doing fantastic. Right in here is the biggest one of the three. The one that everyone was wanting to name Big Bertha. But that is the name of my large monocle cobra, so we're not going to use that name. Here she is right in here. Let's see the biggest rattler. 
Look at that. Look at her. She is doing awesome. Look how big she is. She just ate a rat pup last night. She's getting size to her. And she's been shedding like crazy. I'm gonna close that up. We're gonna close this one up. And then if you look right down here, here's the medium sized one and he's doing awesome. Also ate a rat pup yesterday. So as you can see, they have full bellies. They're taking down rat pups or as you would say, rat crawlers. This is really good. A lot better than mice because it's more protein. It's gonna help them grow faster. It's gonna help them be more healthy because there's more protein in there. It's just all around better. Rats and mice, Comparison, mice are more like the tofu of the rodent world when you're feeding them to animals. So, speaking of uh, rattlesnakes, I've actually got a new rattlesnake from McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. It was a gift to me for helping them soak their Bushmaster. So, I'm actually very excited. It's about this big and... let's go see it. Chandler? I'm down here. It was a dramatic transition. Alright, beautiful people. Okay, so, rattlesnakes. In this snake room we have... The last member of our little Eastern Dimeback Trio. A friend of mine, Rhett Stranberry, is the one who produced these Dimebacks about a year ago, or a year and a half ago. And this is the smallest of all of them. This is actually the little baby. I don't want to mess with him too much because he actually took down a small mouse the other day. Like I said, mice versus rats. Rats are a lot better, but sadly, this little guy is not taking down rats yet. He's still custom to eating little mouse hoppers. Doing really good though. Putting on the body weight, hopefully he does very well. I'm gonna close that up. There we go. Bada bang, bada boom. I'm gonna put this right over here gently. There we go. And then we've got the Yorkoan rattlesnake right here. This guy took down a little mouse fuzzy the other day as well. Look at this. So cool. I love the coloration of this animal. Another animal produced by McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. Yorkoan rattlesnakes. Beautiful species, only found in Venezuela like cookies and cream of the Rattler world. And close that up, and then this, this is what's new. Look at this, this is awesome. All right guys, this is what I'm super excited about. This is the new rattlesnake that I've got in my collection before we show it to you guys. I need to give you a little bit of a backstory. So, the South American rattlesnake, the Crotalsterissus that I got, eh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, little tiny baby, beautiful, you guys love them, along with the Uricone rattlesnake. That came from a batch of babies. It has siblings. Not all the siblings have been taken to new homes. So when I went to go visit McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary recently and I saw the babies again, I was like, wow, they look really good. And if the owner said, why don't you take one home? I said, that would be awesome, thank you. So I was like a little gift for helping them out with the Bushmaster. This isn't just any South American rattlesnake. Look at this. Remember, these guys have diamonds like the Eastern Diamondback. She gave me a South American rattlesnake with no diamonds at all. Look at this, completely pinstriped down the body. It is insane looking. Healthy, has already eaten in my care. That is a beautiful little rattlesnake. Let's see if I can get him out. Look at that. Completely diamondless. Whereas the little one right over here is covered in beautiful yellow diamonds. They came from the same batch of babies. That is insane. Thank you so much, McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. This is so cool. I've never had a diamondless rattlesnake. It is just insane. So this is Crotalus dorisus, the South American rattlesnake. They have hemotoxins and they have neurotoxins, a deadly concoction of venom, because hemotoxins are typically found in pit vipers, and then neurotoxins are typically found in a lapidae. Crates, mambas, cobras, all that good stuff, king cobras. So it's a venom that attacks your nervous system. So it's a really, really nasty combo of venoms. So check that out. Look at them both next to each other. Insane coloration. I'm so stoked about this. They coexist with each other perfectly fine. Rattlesnakes are not really documented to eat each other. It would be more something to worry about if these were elapids, because certain elapid species like coral snakes, king cobras, they tend to eat their roommates. So this is perfectly fine. They're healthy, they are eating. Thank you so much, McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. I truly appreciate it. These are awesome snakes. They're doing amazing. And I'm so stoked to see them grow. So, I will see you guys on the next Chandler's Wildlife. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.